The list of members elect throwing their hats in the ring ahead the inauguration of the 10th House of Representatives is growing by the day. Maki Elema from Tiga State is one of them. He is returning to the House for the second time and he believes he possesses the requisite qualities of a speaker. Maki Elema, a civil servant, rose to the position of a deputy director before he quits to join politics. He is currently out of the country for lesser Hajj, but in a telephone chat with TVC News, gives reasons the seat should be microzoned to him. Zamfara State Born Lawmaker Aminu Jaji has also made known his intent to seek his colleague's support. Amen. Thank you, everyone. The latest addition to the long list is Imo State Born Lawmaker and Chairman House Committee on the Physically Challenged. She says balancing the nation's leadership equation is central to achieving justice for all. The dwindling number of women in parliament calls for concern as she urges the government of the day to declare a state of emergency in that regard. This will be a deliberate act and action that will be a call to action in the real sense if we are not playing lip service. Something drastic, something de deliberate has to be done to ensure that the number of women participation in politics is increased. As the only female in the race, Miriam Unoha appeals to her male colleagues to step down for her in the interest of gender balancing and peace. Some of her colleagues express belief in her ability to lead right. For more than 15 years, the people of Undo South Senatorial District of Undo State have lived in total darkness. This narrative will change in the next few months as the Niger Data Development Commission ended the sea is set to complete installation of the 132-33 kV source station in Okitupukba. This is why the NDDC team is here to assess the level of work done on the project. Yes, sir. We are Led by its executive director project, Charles Ogumola, the NDDC is optimistic that the project will put an end to blackout being experienced in the area. Meeting youth to go and look for projects within their community. Addressing newsmen after the inspection, Ogumola said provision of electricity will stimulate economic activities in the zone, attract investment and create job opportunities for indigenous. He added that access to electricity is essential for economic development and improving quality of life. There are projects that we can be completed and commissioned now with very little effort. That is what we are doing now. So whatever has held this back and other projects across the nine states of the Niger Delta, we are going to intervene and we are going to conclude those projects. So this is one of them. There again, it's of more interest to me because I am from Ondo State. A couple of months I need to commission. There's no use of looking at levels without it bringing light. The effect is when you put on your light or you put on your fan or you put on your fridge, it is working. The State Commissioner for Energy, Rasak Obi, called on people and leaders in the area to protect the facility against vandals so that the project can serve its purpose. That this order. April 12 is the annual commemoration of the International Day of Street Children. It is set aside to give voice to children that live on the streets, drawing attention to respect of their rights. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development is collaborating with Young Ambassadors Against Drug Abuse Initiative to commemorate this year's day for the first time in Nigeria. This is with a promise to continue to work to improve the lives of the vulnerable children. The representative of the minister who spoke at the commemoration says the school alternate program was initiated by the ministry to address the lack of access to quality education those children are faced with. And this is particularly taking care of the street children. And not only street children, we still have like Admajiris, we still have out of school children, we still have other children that are somewhere somehow on their own. So this is to I mean this is to bring them, include them in whatever we are doing and then give them the special protection they deserve. They're not just signing um, laws, treaties and whatever it is that comes your way. We want it to be a practical thing because one of the challenges we have in Nigeria is the issue of implementation. Nigeria is a signatory to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child and there are four guiding principles. Uh, every child has a right to life, survival and development. Every child has a right to be part of decision making in matters that affects them. Every child... 
This is indeed important considering how far meeting the rights of these children can transform their lives, especially as Nigeria has one of the highest number of street children with figures going into millions. Aliyah was just 10 years old when she had to flee Bama, Borno State, with her mom due to the insurgency. While recounting her experience with TVC, she spoke about the vices she saw as she lived on the street of Abuja with her mother for three years, begging for survival. 